Did anyone dare to defy Adolf Hitler's direct orders? The answer is yes. We are talking about Field Marshal Gerd von Rundstedt, who was a prominent German commander during World War II. Of aristocratic and Prussian origin, Rundstedt was completely estranged from Nazism, which led to numerous disagreements with the Führer, whom he considered little more than a simple corporal who had served in World War I. Commander Rundstedt had several tactical achievements throughout the Axis's confrontation with the Allies, which often resulted in high-tension discussions with the German Chancellor. In today's video, we will explore the origins of this character, his promotions and positions in the German military, his significant achievements on the battlefield, and his participation in the Nuremberg Trials. Stay tuned to the screen and get ready to enjoy another installment of Military History. Let's begin! Born on December 12, 1875, in Aschersleben, Germany, Gerd von Rundstedt was a member of a wealthy and respected Prussian aristocratic family. He joined the German army at the age of 16 and began practicing his military skills before being accepted into the officer training school in 1902. After graduating, von Rundstedt was quickly promoted to the rank of captain in 1909. As a trained staff officer, he served in the Prussian military at the beginning of World War I in August 1914. Due to his excellent performance and talent, he was promoted to command his troop that same November. As the conflict progressed, von Rundstedt continued to serve as a staff officer and, by the end of the war, he became the chief of staff of his division. After the armed conflict concluded, he chose to remain in the Reichswehr, the post-war German military. During the 1920s, von Rundstedt quickly rose through the ranks of the Reichswehr due to his undeniable talent and dedication to the study of war. Between 1920 and 1929, he received a series of significant promotions, from lieutenant colonel to colonel and divisional general, and eventually, lieutenant general. Leading the 3rd Infantry Division, he supported the coup d'état in Prussia by Chancellor of the Reich Franz von Papen in July 1932. After decades of service, in 1938, he voluntarily retired from the army when Werner von Fritsch was removed from his position as the commander-in-chief by the Gestapo. However, Adolf Hitler reinstated von Rundstedt into service after the outbreak of World War II, marking the beginning of the second chapter of his impressive career. On August 23, 1939, von Rundstedt was appointed as the commander-in-chief of Army Group South. Within a week, on September 1, Germany invaded Poland, marking the start of World War II. Under his command, the troops advanced from Silesia and Slovakia, complemented by Army Group North led by Colonel General Fedor von Bock. Despite the heroic and determined resistance of Polish militias and citizens, Poland was defeated after a month of fighting. From October 1, 1939, to October 20, 1939, von Rundstedt was appointed as the Eastern Commander-in-Chief and Military Governor of Poland. His appointments spoke of a prolific military career, so the disagreements he had with Hitler were backed by his experience. On October 25, 1939, von Rundstedt was appointed as the commander-in-chief of Army Group A and transferred to the Western Front, taking command of one of the three army groups assigned to the invasion of France and the Netherlands. As the planning progressed, he supported the call of his chief of staff, Lt. Gen. Erich von Manstein, for a swift armored attack towards the English Channel, as it was believed to lead to the enemy's strategic collapse. After isolating the British Expeditionary Force from France, von Rundstedt's troops turned north to capture the Channel ports and prevent their escape to Great Britain. Panzer divisions advanced across the English Channel, effectively sealing the fate of the French, who signed an armistice on June 22, 1940. After the successful invasion and in his new military rank, 
The Prussians supported Manstein's plan for the Battle of France, which would later be known as the Manstein Plan. But not all of his decisions were successful. In May 1940, armored divisions led by Heinz Guderian crossed the Meuse River, creating a significant breach in the Allied front lines. Due to his caution, von Rundstedt doubted the survival of these units without infantry support and called for a halt while they linked up. The Führer agreed to this, and the brief delay allowed the Allies to carry out Operation Dynamo in Dunkirk, which involved the evacuation of Allied troops by the British. The operation saved over 200,000 British soldiers and 100,000 French and Belgian soldiers. This event was a significant setback to Hitler's planned Nazi expansion, and he would later reproach the Prussian commander for this weakness in subsequent exchanges. Despite their differences, on July 19, 1940, during the field marshal's ceremony at the Kroll Opera House, Adolf Hitler promoted 12 of his generals, including von Rundstedt, to the rank of field marshal. This appointment was crucial for the Prussian strategist's military career, as it allowed him to discuss tactical positions on an equal footing, not only with his peers but also with the German Chancellor himself. When Hitler began planning Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union, von Rundstedt was ordered to take command of Army Group South. On June 22, 1941, the day the occupation of Soviet territory was launched, his troops played a key role in the conflict. Von Rundstedt's forces first entered through Ukraine, playing a crucial role in the encirclement of Kiev and the capture of over 452,000 Soviet soldiers by late September. Then, the Prussians' forces managed, with great effort and skill, to capture the city of Kharkov at the end of October and Rostov at the end of November. Despite suffering a heart attack during the advance on the latter city, von Rundstedt refused to leave the front and continued to lead the operations. His hunger for glory was insatiable. With the arrival of the Russian winter, von Rundstedt advocated for halting the advance since his forces were suffering from the harsh weather, and progress was severely hindered. While this request was vetoed by Hitler, von Rundstedt defied the Fuhrer and refused to continue advancing. On November 27, Soviet forces counterattacked and forced the Germans to retreat from Rostov. Unwilling to give ground, Hitler permanently overruled the Prussians' orders to retreat and commanded the advance to continue. Refusing to obey, von Rundstedt was replaced by Field Marshal Walter von Reichenau. Finally, on December 1, 1941, he was relieved of his command. After a brief and forced hiatus, von Rundstedt was recalled in March 1942 to take charge of the German Army Command in the West, responsible for defending Western Europe from the Allies. It was autumn 1943, and there were no notable fortifications on the French coast at that time. After the assignment of Rommel as his subordinate, the construction of the defensive line later known as the Atlantic Wall began. This line consisted of permanent fortifications extending about 2,700 kilometers along the coast. These decisions demonstrated the skill and vision of this commander. Over the following months, von Rundstedt and Rommel clashed over strategic defensive issues. Prior to the invasion, the Prussian argued that the armored reserves should be kept in operational readiness so that they could quickly respond to the most threatened sector where the Allies would land. Rommel, on the other hand, insisted on deploying armored forces close to the coast, just out of range of Allied naval artillery, as Allied air dominance would not allow for greater operational flexibility. After internal disputes, Rommel's decision was carried out, as von Rundstedt's inactivity since his assignment to the Western Front had undermined his authority. The armored divisions were dispersed, with only two assigned to the northern French coast, west of the Seine. Out of these, only one was in the Normandy sector, which had disastrous consequences when the Germans faced the invasion. Once the Normandy landings were completed in June 1944, von Rundstedt began pressing Hitler to negotiate peace with the Allies, as he already saw the situation as lost. Furious with the Prussian, Hitler responded by relieving him of command once again, replacing him with General Gunther von Kluge. 
Things were getting out of hand for the Nazi leader, and on July 20 of that same year, a failed assassination attempt took place. Internal conspirators sought to win the favor of the more veteran field marshals critical of the Fuhrer, such as von Rundstedt. However, despite his open disagreements with the German Chancellor, the Prussian did not share the practices of the conspirators. Those accused of the attempt on Hitler's life were tried by Roland Freisler, and many were executed. As a result of this conspiracy, von Rundstedt agreed to be part of an honor court to assess officers suspected of opposing the Fuhrer. On September 3, 1944, von Rundstedt once again took command of the Western Army but suffered an air operation by Allied militias attempting to regain strategic points in the Netherlands. The Prussian commander and his forces were unable to hold their ground during the fall, and von Rundstedt vehemently opposed the Ardennes offensive planned by the senior Nazi leadership, which was launched in December. He firmly believed that there were not enough troops available for the operation to succeed. Disregarding the advice of the experienced commander, the Nazis carried out the campaign that would be remembered as the Battle of the Bulge, representing the last major German offensive in the West before the end of the war. Continuing his policy of proposing defensive campaigns, von Rundstedt was relieved of command on March 11, 1945. The Prussian commander continued to argue repeatedly that Germany should seek peace rather than fight in a war it could not win, which led Hitler to banish him from the army. With the Allied advance nearing the end of the war, Rundstedt was captured by the United States 36th Infantry Division on May 1, 1945. While being interrogated, he suffered another heart attack, showing a deteriorating state of health. He was taken to Britain, where he was held in captivity, during which time he was interviewed by various military historians. After the war, the British accused him of war crimes during the invasion of the Soviet Union and the Battle of France. These charges were largely based on his support for the Severity Order, which led to mass killings in occupied Soviet territory. However, his participation as a witness in the Nuremberg trials helped shed light on the workings of the German militias during the Third Reich. Meines Wissens nicht, wir haben immer geglaubt, an, an Belgien haben wir nie gedacht. Wir haben immer geglaubt, wie ich vorhin schon sagte, dass Polen eines Tages Deutschland überfallen würde. Darf ich dahin richtig stellen, dass diese Ausführung vor der Kommission gemacht worden sind im Jahre 39, als wir im Westen aufmarschiert waren und nun die Frage entsteht, bleibt Holland und Belgien neutral oder nicht? In diesem Zusammenhang ist damals auch meine Antwort er erteilt worden. Ich habe vorhin gesagt, die Maßnahmen gegen Polen, die damals in dem F.I. David Blondenberg getroffen waren, rein defensiver Natur waren. Ich halte also diese auf Ansicht aufrecht, dass es sich um eine defensive Maßnahme handelte. Wenn Hitler einen Angriffskrieg vorgehabt hätte, dann hätte er mindestens das drei- bis vierfache dieser Divisionen haben müssen. Since he was not part of Hitler's final solution project, the legal proceedings against him were delayed, and there was no consensus to try him as a war criminal. Due to his age and deteriorating health, aggravated by severe arthritis that left him unable to stand, von Rundstedt was never tried and was released in July 1948. The Prussian retired to Hanover until a massive heart attack caused his death on February 24, 1953. We are now nearing the end of this presentation, and we would like to ask you, do you think it was right not to try Gerd von Rundstedt as a war criminal? Leave your opinions in the comments below. Thank you for watching today's video, and we look forward to seeing you in future installments of Military History.